dormant purpose. Solution to all of the world's problems lie in the dormant, untapped, creative purpose of each and every human. Can you imagine the innovation, the technological advances, the projects, the music, the art that lay six feet underground, having never had the opportunity to emerge, to grow and to flourish? Our world has become addicted to savior figures. Gates, Musk, Branson, and an endless list of celebrities pointing where we should go. Paradoxically, what's needed is sovereignty. We need a new paradigm that makes supporting everyone's creative purpose the single highest priority of our culture. Outdated are the days of projecting responsibility outside of ourselves. These are the days when we recognize that we are life. Tapping our innate creative essence is the art of tapping the evolutionary pulse of creation. We are nothing less than unfolding evolution and hence we are responsible to express our creative essence as our ultimate contribution to life evolving. The fingerprints of purpose are found all over our creative passions, right under our nose. Hunt them down, express them to others. Do that and you'll give up waiting for the world to change. You'll be at the center of the change, forging the world that you wish to see. Good morning from the Tarkin Coast and thanks for coming back to the channel. I've got my Billy T sitting over here. Billy T's on fires going. I've woken up on this gorgeous day and I'm, to give a little bit of context, I want to talk about dormant purpose, but first to set some context for this piece and if, if you guys have watched some of the other pieces that I've done on this particular trip, um, I'm out here supporting a man on a, on a, um, a total of, I think it's a 10 day trip and he's gone for five days, four nights, five days solo. On the hunt, on the hunt for purpose. So I want to talk about dormant purpose and, and that, that opening piece is a piece that I wrote some time ago in regard to the tragedy of dormant purpose. And that, that so often, because all of my life is around supporting people into a place of purpose, for me personally, I've lived a, a life of um, a privileged life of purpose. Pretty much my whole adult life have been guiding people into this place since I was 22 years old. So 22 years. And, you know, it saddens me deeply when I see that, that people are living lives that they don't want to be living. And... And obviously the longer that that goes on in terms of one's lifespan, the harder it is that for, for that to be reversed. Hard to teach an old dog new tricks, so they say. But the tragedy in that is that for me, having lived a life of like deeply creative life and continuing to live a deeply creative life, I feel, a res I feel, I feel the emotional pain of people who, who aren't living that and, and, and I, and I also see that there's some just really simple trappings that people fall into that, that are enormous um, obstacles on that path to put purpose. And, and the way that I look at life purpose is really simple. Life purpose is not hard to find. Life purpose is like a shooting star. It's not rare, it's just rare to look. And I feel like we're in a systemic crisis, one where 
um, one where the culture that we live in doesn't support a life of purpose, it supports a life of stability, of survival, if you like. Get the job, make the money, get the house, have the kids, perform the thing, go on a holiday once every year, retire, go and get a caravan, travel around the country and die. And that doesn't constitute a meaningful life in my, in my world. So the, the mission for me is to build a, a, a culture that supports the conversation around life purpose and, and holds a space for that life purpose, um, the feeling of life purpose to emerge. And if you're someone that's really struggling with life purpose, then um, I invite you, if you have time, to take yourself into nature. And the reason that I invite you to take yourself into nature is, is uh, because in nature, um, the distractions of day-to-day -day life are far less, and nature is space. Space holding complexity, and you are the same thing because you are nature. And so the reason that we feel relieved and peaceful in nature is that it's reminding of us of our, of our innate essence. Our culture, even though from a developmental point of view, we've evolved. I really think our culture just got it wrong. We've, we're not building a spacious culture, we're building a busy culture. And that's not conducive to human health and well-being. And if you look at the data and the statistics in regard to depression rates around the world, then all of the evidence is in medication, depression, um, high levels of suicide, obesity, enormous health crisis, left, right and centre, the, the, the exponential rise of diabetes in our culture, shit food. A spacious culture is one where the, in, the individual inhabitants of that culture are cultivating spacious, spaciousness internally, but that's very difficult to do when you live inside uh, an environment, like a busy city, for example, um, that doesn't foster a sense of spaciousness, a workplace that doesn't foster a sense of spaciousness, friends, family that don't foster a sense of spaciousness. So nature becomes an ally. So the way to get to purpose is really simple, you know, and, and it really is really simple. It's not some kind of um, mystical, and you know, you, you may see it as some kind of mystical obstacle or challenge, uh, but I would highly suggest that you don't because to do that makes it a, a, a long way out of reach. Really, life purpose is just uh, the, the creative impulse, your creative energy that's emerging through you, your motivations, your ideas, your inspirations. The way that I look at life purpose is I put a frame around it and I start off with legacy. What do you want to leave? Vision, what do you see for the world, not for you? Mission, the actions that you then need to take, the job that you perform potentially, and purpose, a quality of being, an immortal statement, something that doesn't, isn't dependent upon you potentially not you know, losing the ability to walk or talk even. The reason that I suggest this frame is really simple. Um, it's because it, like in, in identifying those things and like fully jamming out those various elements, then that becomes the fingerprint of your purpose. Those, those creative ideas, those inspirations, you, you are life. That creative energy that's emerging through you is life. You are no different than the wombat that wakes in the morning and has a creative inspiration, uh, an instinct to go out and start to forage. All the, the seabirds out here that are constantly living in this instinctive response to life. We have an instinctive response to life and the advantage, we could say it's an advantage, some might say it's a disadvantage, that we have as humans is we have a prefrontal cortex, so we have that ability for self-observation, the observer, so we can kind of see ourselves, so we can then become conscious of this creative impulse. And that's the, uh, that's the work of identifying life purpose. My life purpose is to be, it's a being statement, a bridge between nature and culture. My life's mission is to guide culture back into nature. That's a doing statement.
my the, the vision that I see is a nature a, a culture informed by nature and the legacy that I leave is a nature informed culture <laughs> and it's so simple I, I feel like we there's a lot of nuance embedded in that but the art is really for you to get to a point where your language is um, completely aligned with the creative motivations inside you and so those two things are integrated the rational mind is integrated with your creative energy and that creates a sense of wholeness and then I have a frame that I can live into I have a frame of accountability I have a direction I have an action plan I have uh, a guiding compass in the form of my purpose and I often I often look at it like if 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 one was to suggest you you know navigate your way through this challenge of your life when you don't have a map it's pretty difficult so that process is what I call a life map or map the inner world and then my purpose becomes the compass for how I direct myself relative to the challenges that arrive arise in my day-to-day -day life so I invite you to take yourself into nature and to go through that process and just jam it out to find allies that uh, that are in support you know your, your, your real allies your real friends like it's like I, I wrote in that piece want your growth not your niceties they, they want to know where your boundaries are your real friends if 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 I'm your best friend and I come to you and I say hey blah 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 and you put up a boundary and you say no I'm actually doing this and then I throw a tantrum and I, and I depart this the friendship that's really not a that's not an ally that's a, a friend of convenience that's a fair weather friend an ally is someone who actively wants you to grow and if you put boundaries up they'll go cool full respect go you how about we check in next week so identify your allies on the path who are those people around you that um, that really are deeply in support of your 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 sense of creative purpose? One of the things that that I'm um, embarking on as I'm out here, I'm I'm writing the content for a course called the Wild Man Challenge, and and effectively that's a that's a an online program that invites men to team up into teams of men, and so we'll go through as a big mob of men. And it supports men from the ground up, from understanding the, the correct gear, safety, and then uh, supporting men to get clear on that life map, take themselves out into wild landscape, and cultivate internal spaciousness. It's the path of Jedi. How do I cultivate internal spaciousness in the face of the circumstance of my life? So. This becomes a dojo, the place becomes a dojo, a training ground, a Jedi training ground, if you like. Now, I'm really inspired by that because it basically means that men can um, come together as a group rather than in that sense of isolation. A man could be anywhere around the world, but team up in, in uh, small groups that we'll break into it during this course. Um, we're, we're now designing an app to hold this thing. And it, and it excites me because for me, that, that's an example for me of an expression of my mission. My purpose is to be a bridge between nature and culture. And to do that, I need to stay spacious. And my mission is to guide culture back to nature and into nature. And so that, that course is an expression of that. And so I highly recommend that for you, 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 you start to make the space in. It's hard to make space in day-to-day -day life when Netflix is there, YouTube's there, Facebook, social media, Instagram, da di da di da all the, dist the distractions. None of that shit's out here. <laughs> it's just me, my pot of tea, the fire, the great southern ocean, swimming, animals, space, meditation, reflection. I've got all the space in the world externally and that then downloads in my system internally until I'm spacious and the place does so much of that work if I just work with it. So dormant purpose is a problem. Bring it online in your life. 
there are other videos on this channel that you might want to look at to that will, that will refine and, and go into a little bit more detail in regard to that. If you'd like to contact me to do a a one-on-one -on -one journey, I do that. If you'd like to come for group experiences, I do that, and I do it in the Tarkine Forest. But if you just want to go by yourself and you've got the resources and the ability to do that, then I highly encourage you to do that. Team up with your friends and family. Go out into, into nature in a reflective way. Learn how to read the principles of life. What's the undercurrent principle of wind? What's the principle of fire? These are all arts. This is an art in, in, in the cultivation of internal spaciousness and that internal spaciousness is something that carries us through in our life. It's the thing that lends us perspective when life gets hard. Hope that's useful. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Appreciate you. I'm gonna to get to my cup of tea and get on with uh, my practice out in this beautiful wild place. Ciao for now.